What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm building a house in the world of Strangerville. And as you could probably already tell by the title or the thumbnail of this video, this is a house for the Not So Berry Challenge. It is for the third generation, which is the yellow gen to be exact. And um, yeah, I'm building a yellow Victorian home in the world of Strangerville. That is where my Gen 3 of Not So Berry is going to live. I know that a lot of people are currently playing Not So Berry, so maybe this house could be useful for you as well. If that's something that um, you you would like to like use or play or whatever, then you could definitely use this one. However, this is a pretty expensive house. I did not have to um, keep track of the budget for this or anything because my not so berry family actually won the lottery a long time ago, but we're still loaded. We won the lottery in literally the first generation. Like one of the first times I played, we just, we won the lottery. It was kind of insane. So ever since I've been trying to like spend all that money because I don't want to be super rich forever. But at the moment, we definitely still have a little bit of money left. And um, yeah, so I could kind of make use of that. It's kind of nice, honestly, because if there's one thing I'm not great at, it is keeping track of a budget while building a house because I tend to just like lose track and enjoy building and enjoy decorating too much. And then I'll just be spending way too much money, way too quickly by adding all these little details to the exterior that literally serve no purpose, but I just really enjoy doing it. So that's how I like, usually my homes just really end up very expensive. And it was actually nice that for this one, even though it is for my actual gameplay, I didn't have to keep an eye on the budget. So I was kind of making use of that situation. What I probably will do in my gameplay though, is when I have the people or like the Sims move into this house, I'll probably just like evict them from their current home without like selling their furniture or anything. So they'll just move out with their current like household funds and then I'll have them purchase this house. And then that will like spend, I'll spend a lot of money that way because we won't be selling any of our existing furniture or anything like that. Um, other than like stuff that I obviously want to keep, I'll put that in the household inventory and then we can move that to this house, like personal items, like pictures and just things that we made that we don't want to lose, like that sort of stuff. But for the rest, I've really been trying to spend a lot of money. I have just been not very successful because a million simoleons goes a long way. That's the amount I believe that you win when you win the lottery. That is a lot of money in game and it is pretty difficult to spend that much. I've really been trying the um, red gen, which is the gen two of the Not So Berry Challenge, which is what we're playing right now. Um, she has been spending a lot of money. She's living a pretty luxurious lifestyle in the city in a big penthouse. And, um, you know, she has, she has definitely been spending a lot of money, but still there is a lot of money to go around. So, I'm building this yellow house in Strangerville and it's going to be pretty expensive, which is good. Cause like I said, I want to spend some money, but yeah, if you're not familiar with the not so berry challenge, basically what it is, it is a legacy challenge where each um, generation is based on a specific color. And you can really take that as far as you'd like. You can um, really only use items in game, for example, for their house that are labeled as yellow and tr try to turn it into like a, a one color challenge, if you will, like a, single color can only use yellow for anything and everything kind of a situation. I am not doing that exactly. I'm definitely using yellow as the main color, but I'm also combining it and mixing and matching it with some different like colors um, and like neutrals to kind of still have it look nice, if you will, because I personally am not really good at making anything and everything the same color. I just really struggle with it and therefore it's not as enjoyable for me to do. So what I like to do is just take one color, use that as the base, as like the head color, if you will, and then I'm just going to combine it with some other accents. So that's what I did for this one as well. And I feel like that just turned out really, really fun. I'm not the greatest at Victorian houses. I feel like I say that every time I build a Victorian house, I'm like, putting out a disclaimer that I feel like I'm not very good at Victorian houses. However, I'm really proud of how this one came together. I was working off of a reference picture that I found, um, that I found on Pinterest somewhere. And that really helped me get started on the shape and like the roof line and everything. But really my own inspiration kind of took over from there. And it kind of just like, it was flowing together pretty naturally. And I was just having a lot of fun with this house in general. I'm using a lot of Strangerville doors and windows cause of course Strangerville comes with um, a lot of Victorian buildings 
household items. And those windows with the shutters and the beautiful doors, they're just so perfect. And here you can see that I was starting to combine some blue on the exterior as well. I was building this house on stream and someone in chat actually suggested that maybe I could combine it with some pops of blue. At first I felt like maybe that's cheating because blue is not yellow, you know what I mean? But then I decided, you know what? It actually looks so good. I love this combination of colors, the lighter like baby blue, if you will, and then the really light like pastel-ish yellow. It's just so pretty. So I was enjoying that and uh, I just kind of kept going with it. And so, yeah, it's like blue and yellow on the exterior. I try to use a lot of yellow landscaping as well. We have a lot of yellow flowers and stuff that you'll see a little bit later on. And then on the inside, I combined some more colors. Uh, but it's definitely yellow for the most part. We also have a really sneaky tower up here, which is really fun. Um, and just let me tell you a little bit about this yellow generation. So the air for the yellow gen basically is just into space. They're obsessed with space and they want to go to 6M. That is their main goal. They're going to be in the astronaut career and they are going to build a rocket. They have to master the rocket science um, skill alongside some other skills. I think you have to also max out handiness because you have to enter into the secret world of Oasis Springs to do something. I'm not remembering all the goals from the top of my head, but they all have to do with like handiness, rocket ship, building, going to space, science, that kind of stuff like that kind of a thing. So that's what the yellow air is going to be focusing on. Also for their skills, they, they're they clumsy, a loner and something else, which are also yellow traits, like their little icons are yellow. And so uh, I'm not exactly remembering that last trait there, but it's clumsy and, and ambitious, right? I just quickly looked it up because that was really gonna bother me. <laughs> so I just quickly looked it up. So clumsy, ambitious and a loner. For their aspiration, they're going to be a nerd brain and then for their career, they're going to be an astronaut. So while I have this page open, let me just read you a little bit about Gen 3. So it says, growing up, you never had a close relationship with your parents and spent the majority of your time alone in your room obsessing over space. You just really love space. You'll do whatever it takes to get to 6M no matter the cost. So that's actually cool because um, our yellow Gen Air, her name is Sunny, but she goes by Cheese because she's all yellow, her hair is yellow, and it kind of looks like cheese. So we call her cheese. By the way, I play Not So Berry on stream, if you're confused. I don't actually upload those videos to my main channel, but I do upload all my VODs, my Twitch VODs, to my second channel, which is more Simmery, and I will uh, actually link the playlist to the Not So Berry stream VODs in the description down below. So if you want to check it out, then you can go ahead and watch those streams back if you want to. They're slightly longer videos because they're streams, unedited streams, so it's, uh, it's a bit longer. But if that's something you enjoy then um, make sure to check it out like feel free to watch it so that's what I'm playing over on stream and our heir her name is like I said Sunny but we call her cheese um, her mom was not really the mom type uh, the baby like their her pregnancy was definitely an accident and she has the aspiration where she wants to have multiple relationships what is that one called again serial romantic right of course uh, her mom had the serial romantic aspiration. She's hot-headed, a snob, and romantic, and her career was politician. So you can kind of see how, you know, it's not really the mom type. She's very self-absorbed. She definitely makes things happen for herself, but yeah, she does not have the best relationship with her actual child, who does have a good relationship with her child, with Sunny the Cheese, is Sunny's grandma, the first generation heir, the mint generation's heir, she is dead, but she's a ghost and she's part of our household as well. So that way I was still able to have Cheese and uh, her grandma build a beautiful relationship. It's very wholesome and it actually makes sense because Cheese is a loner. She doesn't really have any friends or close relationships other than her grandma who is dead and a ghost. Um, and it just kind of, it really just kind of fits the vibe. Also, her grandma was a scientist when she was alive, like way back in the day. She has been to 6M, so it's it kind of makes sense that, you know, those two are close. They have very similar interests. And the red gen, Ruby, uh, does not have similar interests at all. She's very different. So that's why their relationship never really 
happened. It never really took off. They don't have a great relationship, but Minty, the grandma and Cheese do. So that's very, very wholesome. You can also see that I built some stables here on this lot and that's because she is actually, she doesn't really get along with people that well. She's she's very much a loner, but she does get along with animals. We went to, uh, like, we went on vacation to Sulani once with uh, when Cheese was still a child. And we went swimming and she made friends with a dolphin. Um, so that's really cool. And she also has a hedgehog, which she loves very much. She's actually on her second hedgehog because the first one already died. Um, but yeah, she's gonna have hedgehogs for the rest of her life forever. You'll also see that I placed a little hedgehog cage in this house on the landing. So of course we need to have a little spot for the hedgehog. Um, and I decided that, you know, it would be a fun gameplay addition for her to have a horse. I'm not exactly sure, like in my brain, that's really fun. I'm not exactly sure how much time we're gonna have to actually work on that skill and take care of the horse because, you know, we're very busy with all these goals that we kind of have to achieve and building a rocket ship and stuff like that. But she's being very much like good with animals and enjoying being around animals and becoming friends with animals. I thought it would be such a cute addition for her to have a horse. And it's also just so picturesque to kind of like imagine her riding around on her horse through Strangerville. I feel like that would be so fun. Um, now, I also know that a lot of people actually play and build in Oasis Springs for this generation because you also have to enter the secret lot of Oasis Springs and like Oasis Springs, science, it just kind of goes hand in hand. But I didn't really want to do that because we were playing in Oasis Springs with the first generation. So I didn't really want to go back there. I wanted to try out a different world. We were in Oasis Springs for the first generation. We're in San Myshuno for the second. And then for the third one, I thought it'd be cool to kind of go into Strangerville because, you know, if not going to Oasis Springs for like the sciencey vibes, then I feel like Strangerville is the next Next best thing, if you will. It's kind of similar, but different. And I feel like it was just very fitting. Also because we're going to have to build a rocket ship in our backyard and she is being a loner. She doesn't really want people to look at her weird. She doesn't really want to draw attention to herself. Building a rocket ship in your backyard would definitely draw attention. Where it wouldn't draw attention necessarily is in Strangerville because things are a little bit weird there anyway. So I felt like it would make sense for her to, um, to you know, move here and just build on her rocket ship and work on her science aspirations and like all those things. I felt like this would be a great vibe for that. Also, it just kind of fits her because Cheese is... I love her. She's definitely my favorite sim I've ever played. She is definitely a little weird though. And I just feel like Strangerville would be a fun spot for that. And on top of that, I thought it'd be fun as another gameplay addition. I thought it'd be fun for grandma to solve the Strangerville mystery on the side. Cause grandma's dead. She's a ghost. She doesn't have a job. Um, Cheese is growing up, so grandma doesn't really need to look after Cheese all that much anymore. She can kind of take care of herself now, and I don't want to get rid of grandma just yet, so I thought it'd be fun to have her solve the Strangerville mystery as a ghost. How fun is that? And then on top of that, we're also trying to work on getting Ambrosia so grandma can come back for a little bit longer. I'm definitely holding off on actually doing that though because she's an elderly Sim, so if we bring her back to life using Ambrosia, Pretty soon after that, she's gonna die again because she's really old. So I don't want her to die without having solved the Strangerville mystery. So I think we're gonna do that first and then kind of as a reward, <laughs> we can bring her back to life. And then she can just live out her remainder, like the remainder of her days as a Sim that's actually alive. And then she'll die and then she'll be gone for good. And at that point, Cheese will probably be an adult going on maybe even already an elderly Sam at some point as well. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. And also Strangerville made sense because Ruby, Cheese's mom, has definitely done some things in her day. Uh, she, she was the national leader there for a little bit. She actually, her term is over, so she's now working on becoming a famous writer, but she doesn't really wanna be recognized all the time so it'd be nice for her to move to strangerville as well because it's like nice like peace and quiet you know in a way it's weird but like people won't be actually recognizing her here probably and also she's done some things um because you might be wondering what happened to cheese's dad well cheese doesn't really know that either 
Um, Ruby does, but she never told her daughter about that. Um, but yeah, Cheese's dad kind of unalived in the pool in the penthouse where Ruby lives, and it might or might not be uh, Ruby's responsibility that that, that happened. Um, it's it's really quite terrible. And after that, the same thing happened with another Sim who was the witness to everything that happened. We cannot have any witnesses around. So that pool or that Sim was also kind of unalived in the pool. And that also is kind of Ruby's responsibility. So yikes. So, you know, it might be nice for Ruby to move somewhere where she can kind of hide. And what better place to do that than in Strangerville, you know? So it kind of makes sense in that way as well. So all those little storyline situations, things that are going on in this Let's Play, it kind of makes sense for all these Sims to move through Strangerville. I'm, I won't lie, most excited for solving the Strangerville mystery. I've only done that once and it was years ago and I don't really remember it. I do remember that I had a lot of fun actually doing that. I know that Strangerville, like the gameplay, isn't everyone's cup of tea. That's completely understandable, but I had a lot of fun with it when I played it for the first time and it's been years. So I feel like it'd be kind of fun to do that again and do it on stream and kind of like figure it out together. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Realistically, how much time am I gonna have to do all that? I'm not exactly sure. I might be in over my head with all these ideas like the horse taking care of that and also doing the Strangerville mystery. We're also gonna adopt a dog because I feel like um, Cheese would really, really love to have a dog by her side all the time. Maybe the dog wants to go to space with her. We can, Obviously, that's not possible. I don't think you can bring a dog in your rocket ship, but we can just kind of pretend, maybe. We could maybe travel to Sixem with our dog. I'm not sure if that would be possible at all, but that would be really cool, so we could try that. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be a lot going on in this gameplay, and I'm actually very excited about moving on to the uh, yellow generation. We're not there yet because Cheese at this point is only a teenager. She just aged up into a teenager not too long ago. We had her, we had her first week of high school. She went to prom for the very first time, which which was a very awkward experience, but she went anyway. She didn't really want to, but she went anyway because otherwise people might look at her even funnier, you know, like she didn't really want that. So she kind of tried to fit in. It was her attempt to like fit in with the rest of the cool teenagers, the rest of the cool high schoolers, you know? It didn't really work out that way because she started to do the cowpoke dance on the dance floor at prom. You can only imagine how that kind of like played out, you know, it wasn't great, but she tried. She's not gonna go back to prom. This was her one and only prom. I don't think she's ever gonna go again. Um, but yeah, that happened and yeah, she's just living with her mom and her grandma and her hedgehog and their two cats. Uh, so yeah, it's it's quite a, a silly little let's play and I'm having so much fun with it. It also takes you through like different packs and things and different aspirations and uh, traits as well that I normally wouldn't really play or pick, you know? So it's really fun in that regard as well. Also, this house is not a limited pack build by any means. I'm using a lot of packs for this one cause I was just really enjoying building this house and I wanted it to be perfect for my existing like gameplay challenge. So it's not a limited pack build by any means, but I feel like that's that's fine for this one. Um, and you can really tell that this house, we have already started on the interior and I was definitely talking over all of that, but you can definitely tell that it's very yellow. I was struggling with the kitchen. I wanted to use this flooring that I found. These yellow tiles from For Rent are so pretty and I thought they were perfect for this house with this color scheme. The only thing I struggled with was the wallpaper and I decided to just go ahead and combine it with this pink or like plum-ish kind of color. I'm not exactly sure what you would call this color, but it's really pretty. It goes seamlessly with the tiles because it's from the same pack and that same color is also in the details of the tile. And it was just too perfect not to use it. So I decided, you know what, besides blue, I'm also gonna combine some of this darker pink situation cause it's just so pretty. And then I also found this rug, this organic shaped rug that I think is from Seasons. And it comes in the perfect swatch that actually ties in that yellow and that pink. 
seamlessly. I almost screamed a little bit when I saw it on stream. I could not believe how perfect it was. I was also struggling with the shape for the rug because the floor plan or the layout in this kitchen with the dining table being where it is, is a little bit odd, um, but th really that organic shape for the rug really tied it all together and kind of draws your attention away from the the blockiness of it all. I'm not exactly sure how else to explain it, but the layout to me at the time felt a little bit weird, um, but it all works out. I actually set it up pretty spaciously on purpose because this is for actual gameplay too. So it would only make sense to have things be a little bit spacious. Also, I wanted there to be some room for pictures on the wall that I'm gonna bring over and maybe some other items that I'm gonna be bringing over like from our previous home or current home, I should say to this one once we move. Um, I wanted there to be options for me to shuffle things and rooms around because we do have three bedrooms. No, 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 we have four bedrooms upstairs. One of them currently is just a little bit of a home gym because Ruby is very much into fitness and um, we do not have a child yet, of course, with the yellow air either. So we don't really need a nursery or kids bedroom yet. So I turned the smallest bedroom upstairs into um, a little home gym. It's only very simple. And then we have this office space downstairs as well. So if need be, if we had like two kids, for example, um, or we wanted to move maybe the red gen to the bedroom downstairs, then we could like turn this office into a bedroom and like shuffle things around upstairs. You know, I wanted to have that bit of freedom for gameplay. As the household kind of evolves, you never know what happens. We're obviously gonna have cheese have science babies because that only makes sense. She's not really ever going to have a romantic relationship or anything. That's just not something that's in the cards for her or something that she wants. So a science baby would make so much sense for her. So we're definitely going to do that. But, you know, watch the game. Give me triplets for that. It's going to happen. I can feel it in my bones. So I kind of wanted the space for like unexpected things like that, like having triplets. To, or twins even, to have enough space for a couple babies because the um, bedroom upstairs that is supposed to be like turned into a nursery at some point is definitely too small for like a shared room. So, you know, that's why I kind of wanted to give myself some wiggle room, shuffling things around, um, stuff like that. So that's what I did. Then we're moving on to the second floor. And I did, of course, give both Minty and Ruby their own bedrooms too. And I kept their own color schemes for that. I thought that would be fun. Since Ruby is the red gen air and Minty is the mint gen air, I thought it would be nice to reflect that in their current bedrooms too. And then the generation after yellow, I think is gonna be gray. So we're gonna have a really sad gray nursery at some point. I'm kind of excited to work with a more neutral color because of course the first gen was mint, second gen was red, third gen is yellow. These are all very bright colors to work with for solid color homes. Um, I'm excited to see where gray will lead us. I feel like it's gonna be so difficult. I thought that these bright colors would be difficult, but thinking about gray, I'm like, yikes. That's gonna be so gray, you know what I mean? Like, how am I gonna, I mean, of course I do give myself freedom to actually work on, um, or like actually work with like accent colors and stuff, but with gray, I'm not so sure what to do with it. So, but it's a long way away until we have to worry about that. So that's a problem for another day. This first bedroom, which is a yellow bedroom is actually um, Cheese's bedroom, of course, because that one is yellow. I thought that the new wallpaper that we got with the, whatchamacallit pack, the uh, Crystal Creation stuff pack. I thought that was perfect because it has like moons and little stars on it. It's so cute. I thought that'd be a cute little pattern for a sim that's into space, but in a bit of a sophisticated way. And I combined her, like the yellow in her room with some lilac and like purple colors. I thought that was really, really cute. So that is her bedroom. And then after the yellow one, we're moving on to the red bedroom, which is of course for Ruby, Cheese's mom. Um, it's a nice bedroom. Also, Ruby is at some point going to have to get married still. She has a serial romantic aspiration, but one of the goals for the red gen is to get married as an elderly sim. So we're going to have to do that at some point as well, while we're probably already in this house, because as soon as Cheese becomes a young adult, we're gonna we're just gonna move here and like start working on her goals. Um, and like focus on that a little bit more. I'm kind of low key already working on her goals, 
But for example, I did not give her the nerd brain aspiration from the start. I gave her one of the high school teenager aspirations to start off with. Otherwise, I thought it'd be a little bit too easy. You know what I mean? If we could get started on that, on that aspiration too early on, then I don't know. I feel like I wanted to make it a little bit more difficult for myself. So I decided that for the Not So Berry challenge in general, I'm just going to give the teenagers a teenager aspiration. And then once they become young adults, that's when we'll actually start focusing on their aspirations and goals a little bit more. Um, but I am already working on, say, like handiness with uh, cheese a little bit there and like logic and stuff like that. So that's definitely going to help her out when she gets older. Um, but yeah, Ruby, Ruby will be living here at some point when she gets married as an elderly sim, which is going to be the last thing for us to take off, um, so to speak, for the um, for the ret gen. So that's actually a lot of fun. And I also think that Ruby is going to be around for a very long time because she is level 10 fitness. And that means I think that your elderly sims, they just live a lot longer. Their lives are just longer because they have level 10 fitness. They're super healthy and in shape. Um, so that's also interesting to see. I wonder how long she's going to be around for. But yeah, she can write us books and make us some money that way. Not that we need it, but at some point I feel like we're going to need it again. Because like I said, I am trying to get rid of all that money somehow. Then we actually have three bathrooms total in this house. We have one ensuite here. Ruby is the lucky one. Uh, she is getting an ensuite. That's that's just the way like cheese things. She's like, you know what? I don't need an ensuite. I'm gonna give it to my mom. She'll be very happy. Cheese is such a sweet sim. Like she is so considerate and nerdy and cute and I just really really like her and then I gave Minty a bedroom with access to the tower and I actually placed the um little station thingy that you need like the little desk setup that you need to solve the Strangerville mystery I put that in the tower so that's what Minty is gonna use to be solving the Strangerville mystery I thought that would be really fun and of course I had to give her access to the tower with like through a little secret bookcase door you know stuff like that I thought that would be really fun and then after the bedrooms and bathrooms we're moving on to the backyard I actually already decorated it for the most part. I just had to put some furniture on the back porch here. I also decorated the uh, shed, like the horse stable off camera. It is really simple though. There is just a horse stable in there and some decorations and of course a handiness table as well. But in a little bit here, I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the place and um, yeah, you'll be able to see everything I did. Of course, we have the rocket ship building thingy in the backyard as well, because we needed some space for that. I'm very excited. I don't think I've ever had a Sim build a rocket ship, like complete it. So it's actually really fun. I'm very excited to get started on that gameplay. Um, but I'm just placing the final few decorations here and that's gonna be it. So let's jump into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game. It's very dramatic looking in a good way. I love the background with these mountains and I don't know, Strangerville just holds a special place in my heart. It's such a beautiful world and perfect for our yellow gen of the Not So Berry Challenge. But yeah, anyway, we have this pathway leading up to the front porch here. There's a little area with a letterbox and an outdoor bin, of course. There is a little side porch here. Oops, jumpy camera. A little side porch here with a bench and a rocking chair. And then of course, around the back here, we have the yard, a nice back porch with a dining table, another trash can, cause this is right off of the kitchen. So I thought that would be convenient. Lots of yellow flowers, uh, the rocket ship, of course, the horse shed, which is just very simple, but we do have the handiness table in here so that's where we can work on that a little bit more and the horse can just kind of walk around here of course outside as well moving on to the inside we have a uh, hallway space here this floor plan is very closed off i thought that would make sense to have a closed off floor plan for an old victorian home so there is that a nice hallway with a staircase an entryway space and this is where i started to combine some blue with everything on the inside as well at the end of the hallway here is a nice full bathroom it's actually pretty nice and spacious, but pretty simply decorated. And then through this beautiful tall archway here, we have the formal living room or actually just the only living room. It's very yellow and blue. I love the colors in here. I think it's so pretty, especially combined with this wallpaper from the decor to the max kit. It's really so, so cute. And I also went through and added some space 
photos. I totally forgot these existed, but um, yeah, I just kind of went through and placed these because they're so perfect. I also put down a dog bed, of course, for the dog we do not yet have, but we will at some point. There's a small table here, and then this archway leads you into a little hobby room. I wasn't sure what to do with this. Essentially, it's just a big hallway that leads you from one porch to another. But I decided, you know what, let's turn it into a small hobby room with a bookcase, a piano, and some indoor planter boxes too, or planter pots. Since we are working on creating ambrosia, so that would actually be pretty helpful. Over here is the office space. So there's just a desk in here and also a gemologist table because Minty is actually into making jewelry. She does that from time to time. So I thought it'd be fun to add that in here. And of course, another beautiful space picture as well. Then on the other side of the house, we have the kitchen and dining. It's super yellow and I just love how it combines with that beautiful dark pink or plum. Still unsure on what to call that color, but it's really nice. This yellow kitchen is just so pretty. I love the shade of yellow. It makes me really happy. There's a little bit of an awkward space here, but someone suggested I should put a fish tank and I never do that. And I just think it's such a cool little addition to have that here. So yeah, fish tank it is. Some space for personal photos. I do have a lot of those in the game, so it's gonna be fun to add those. And then a nice six seater dining table. And of course, some more space photos here up on the wall. Upstairs, we have the landing. The shape of this landing is a little bit wonky, but that's just how it worked out. Of course, we had to have a spot for the hedgehog here. So there he is. And then all the way over here on this side is Cheese's bedroom. It's nice and yellow and purple. As you can see, I loved combining the uh, lilac with the yellow. It's just, it's so pretty. I love that color combination. Over here is at some point going to be a nursery. That's what my plan is at least. For now, it's just a tiny home gym. There's not much going on in here, but you know, I didn't want to clutter it up all the way only to like take it down later. A small shared bathroom here, uh, like a little hallway bathroom. And then over here is Minty's bedroom. It's very simple, but there's already so much going on with the patterns and the color that I just really wanted to keep this very simple. And then she, of course, has access to the tower. So this is just some storage. But if you take this ladder, this is where you'll find the setup for the Strangerville gameplay. And then there is another level here that I just kind of kept empty because I wasn't sure what to do with it. I did put a yoga mat out here, though. I'm not sure if it's functional, but it is a cool place to do some yoga if you wanted to. And then of course there is Ruby's bedroom, which is extremely red and a little bit over the top, but it suits her personality, so that's what I went with. She does have her own desk with a computer in here because she is currently a writer, so I thought it'd be nice to give her that. She has a dresser, and then she's the lucky one with an ensuite. I really like this bathroom in red as well, red and black. I think it's really pretty. So yeah, she has that, and then there is a shared balcony out here with just a couple of activities as well. And then that is basically it for this build. So this yellow Victorian for the Not So Berry Challenge is up on the gallery. It comes in at just over 144,000 simoleons. It's a lot of money, but it's actually not as expensive as I was expecting it to be. So it's not that bad. It has four bedrooms, two bathrooms total. That is not correct. It should say three. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's a little mistake on my end, but that's okay. It does use a bunch of packs, as you can see, and I built it on a 40 by 30 up on the hill in Strangerville. So if you want to place it in your game, then that is where it goes. But that's going to do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download this build off the gallery like I just showed you. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Instagram and on TikTok if you like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you would like to get notified of every single time I upload a video, just click the little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.